Hello, everybody, and welcome to the GE Google Plus Hangout, uh, the industrial in it, and big bets on big data. My name is Jude Shram, and I am CIO of our uh, aviation digital business. And today, we're going to spend a little bit of time uh, broadcasting during the Paris Air Show, talking about uh, the industrial internet, and we're going to spend some time with some Q&A at the end. So let me just go ahead and jump in and get started. Um, you know, we put together the uh, aviation business who have spent the last better part of the three to five years working in the space on digital and on the industrial internet. And I would like to really uh, in, invite those colleagues to introduce themselves. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to them one at a time. Um, but before I do that, I think I want to note that um, we'll also um, be making sure that the questions that we answer at the end of the community hangout um, will be something that we can do. And you can follow or at, GE, at General Electric Using and using the hashtag industrial hangout. So with that, let me start with uh, our first participant, John Goff. John, why don't you go ahead and give a quick introduction. Yeah, hi, my name is John Goff. I am the uh, head of sales for flight efficiency services. Uh, I live in Austin, Texas, where uh, most of our, our engineering group for analytics and, and for flight efficiency services is based. Great, all right, thanks, John. Hey, in our next... Uh, Participant will be uh, Brant Simmons. Brant, could you please introduce yourself? Yeah, certainly. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Brant Simmons. I work in the Forecasting Analytics Group. That's an engineering group. Uh, we actually uh, work on supporting the field and engines and work on uh, investigations and supporting our customers with the field of commercial engines. Great. Thanks, Brant. And uh, our final panelist is uh, Andrew Jones. Andrew, could you go ahead and introduce yourself, please? Sure. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Andrew Jones. I'm based uh, in Ottawa in Canada, and I'm the uh, flight efficiency services product leader for uh, fuel management and flight risk management products. Great. Thanks, Andrew. Appreciate that, guys. Uh, you know, before we get started, what I want to do is just take a few minutes and give everybody a brief introduction to what is the industrial internet and how GE uh, as a company is really looking to define the space for, for our industrial businesses. Um, you know, over the better part of the last two decades, we've seen different sectors of the economy really flip from an analog world to a digital world. And you could go all the way back to starting with telecom and looking at uh, the way that digital transfer industry and you look at winners and losers, you look at AT&T, you look at companies that have thrived in the digital space of that industry and you look at other companies like MCI that really didn't make that transition quick enough um, and suffered as a business as a result of that and you can take that all the way through multiple sectors of our economy. You can look at the, uh, the, the books with Amazon and with Borders and what's happened in that space with with really complete disruption to everything being online, everything being available to people through all of their digital devices, um, getting up through retail and different sectors and what GE really firmly um, has uh, invested our effort and capital into is understanding that in the industrial sectors of our economy this is the next real space where we'll see digital disruption change the way we work. Um, our services industries uh, our, our industries where we believe digital products and digital offerings can really enhance and build tremendous value for, for companies in the industrial uh, sectors of our economy as we move forward in looking at how you can create more efficiencies for, for airlines in our industry in particular, but if you look at oil and gas, if you look at healthcare, if you look at the power industries, we believe similar disruptions will happen in all of those. Um, what we need to do now is actually pull up one um, quick slide, and we're not going to do this throughout the entire Hangout, but we're going to do it now to talk a little bit about the Industrial Internet Initiative here at GE, and I'm going to share this with everybody, and uh, that might be the wrong one. Is that it? If, you, if you go south. Sorry, let me find the, uh, the one I want to present. Can people see that? Mm -hmm. I don't know where it went. All right. Well, sorry, folks. I know we're having a little challenge with the slide. I was going to pull up, but I will go ahead and talk it. Um, here it is. So the, the G Industrial Internet Initiative really is all about you know, reducing waste in aviation. If you look at the opportunities, we believe there are inefficiencies in our industry. 
There's $22 billion a year that we think is available, and you can see that in really three areas. There's fuel efficiency, inefficiencies, where we believe there's probably $10 billion of opportunity. Uh, delays and cancellations attribute another $8 billion, and finally, asset availability. And so those are areas where we have focused our Predix platform and where we focused um, our solutions to help our airline partners and customers and to help uh, different aspects of our industry really try to take advantage of Predix to find these efficiencies and expose them within their own companies. So with that, what I'd like to now do is turn this over to some of my colleagues on the panel to let them talk about how they're seeing this in their space and how this translates to opportunities for our customers. John, you want to go ahead and start for us? Yeah, I sure will. Um, you know, when we started this journey about five years ago uh, with our first customer of Gold being in our what used to be called fuel and carbon solutions, you know, and we were going out to uh, airlines around the world and trying to get them to understand that that by the use of aggregating your data, cleanse and validating it, baselining it off of the projects that you want to measure, there is an opportunity to save fuel beyond what you think you're doing uh, and, and using models and assumptions using the real data. And, and you know, that met with a lot of resistance because airlines are saying, hey, you know, don't tell us how to run our airline and things like that, and we can do this ourselves. And in this space of, of data analytics and everything, they, our biggest com competitor is the airline themselves. But what we're finding in the last year as this whole buzz around the industrial Internet, around big data, around analytics is they realize they need help. They, they, there's just so much big data and if you, you know, the definition of big data is volume, velocity and, and variation. So, it, you know, they're realizing that, that they can't control it. They, they don't know what to do with it. And so they're looking now to outside companies to help them uh, be kind of like an analytics hub for them. And that's where flight efficiency services come in. You know, and, and, and you know, we've had tremendous success uh, both here in the U.S. and abroad. Uh, you know, with with customers like United and Southwest, and customers like AirAsia and China Eastern and Lufthansa that are embracing this fact that hey, I, I just got, I have so much going on in my airline. You know, to devote the IT resources and devote the data scientists that I would need to analyze all this data, it would prevent me from doing what I really want to do, and that's move people from point A to point B. So, you know, we're seeing this change of attitude and now we're, we're in a perfect position with not only the services that we have to offer around uh, flight risk management, uh, around fuel management, around navigational services, planning and recovery, uh, and crew optimization. Um, they're realizing that, hey, I need help on this and I can't do this themselves. So we're starting to see tremendous growth in our sales and the number of customers that we're signing. Uh, last year, uh, I think we signed 59 new contracts. We brought on 22 new customers, and we're going to have about the same number of people this year. So uh, it's 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 exciting. It's revolutionary uh, to these guys, and we're really looking forward to the future. Hey, great, John. Thanks for that update. That's, uh, that's some really good progress. And what I want to do now is turn this over to Andrew Jones to give a very specific example of some customers we're working with. Andrew, take it away. Thanks, Jude. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the work we've been doing with uh, with AirAsia. And just know, AirAsia is a an extremely efficient, well-established, innovative, low-cost carrier based out of headquartered out of uh, Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. They have uh, approximately 200 airplanes. They operate over 950 flights per day throughout the region into uh, a number of destinations serving you know, Thailand, Indonesia, uh, Malaysia itself, and going further afield as well into India, and uh, some of their longer haul flights uh, into uh, as far away as Australia. So they're, uh, they're an extremely you know, large player in the region, extremely efficient, um, very aggressively uh, managing their costs. Uh, their tagline is uh, is built on the fact that what they want to do is enable everyone to fly. So, driving costs down is very very important to them, and it's an absolute you know absolutely central uh, tenet of the the whole operational um, strategy. So, we've been working with AirAsia for approximately five years now, uh, both in navigation services and also uh, providing you know fuel management services uh, to them. And really, our experience has been. It's, uh, it's a metaphor, really, for our transition from, let's say, a traditional 
uh, engineering approach to helping airlines become more operationally efficient and the transition into what, it, what we are now, which is essentially you know, a software company. So the traditional approach to uh, our fuel efficiency services was always to deploy a number of operational specialists and uh, they would then go on a voyage of discovery within the airline to uh, you know, look for savings opportunities based on traditional well-known operational best practices that were really uh, defined uh, 10 to 15 years ago through ICAO and through IATA. Um, so the teams would deploy, they'd look for uh, documentation, flight operations manuals, operational procedures, etc. And if there was any data available that could help support the analysis, then they would use that data to you know, qualify and quantify some of their um, discoveries, findings, and evaluations. And then we would help with some relatively unsophisticated tools, sophisticated at the time, but you know, when you look at them now, they were, they were not that sophisticated to help measure and quantify and report to the airlines what they were saving on, on a day-to-day, month-to-month, year-to-year basis. But what we found with AirAsia, bearing in mind that they had embodied an awful lot of these operational best practices as part of their foundational um, operational strategies and the FOM and procedures, it became very quickly apparent to us that the traditional approach to finding savings and helping them implement wasn't going to work. So that caused us to take a fundamental <clears throat> look at how we were delivering our support to our and, and what that caused us to do was basically to reinvent, to innovate, to get back to you know GE's grassroots to look at, oh well, you know, we need to invent something that's totally different here because it's not what we're doing is not working. So we took a long hard look at the data, we proceeded to uh, very quickly and working in conjunction with AirAsia, develop what we call now our block cost model, which is a very sophisticated statistical tool that we use to identify, quantify, qualify, and measure operational savings. Uh, it's, it's an excellent tool for managing and measuring the operational behavior of the airline. So what we did was we basically turned our way of doing business in flight risk, ma- sorry, in, in fuel management, completely on its head. We started with, you know, deploying operational specialists and using data in support. What we do now through the block cost model is we have an extremely sophisticated analytical platform that we use our operational specialists to interpret the outputs from. So we've basically turned the whole thing on its head. What that's enabled us to do is help AirAsia basically move towards being able to save over one percent of their annual fuel bill. They burn something over 12 million barrels of fuel per year. That's 1.4 billion kilograms, um, over a billion dollars a year. So what we've been able to do with them uh, through the deployment of the analytical tools and also you know, supported by still our operational experts is help them save on an average one hour flight something in excess of 250 kilograms, which is, which is tremendous. And especially when you consider the starting point that where we've uh, where we come from with AirAsia, they were very efficient to start with. So what we're doing, you know, right now, and as we're moving forward with the program, is that we are continually working to improve our data collection. So moving towards a real-time data collection process, helping you know funnel that uh, that data into more sophisticated, more innovative, more um, capable analytical tools and also providing a much better user experience working with our software center of excellence guys down at San Ramon to really take the whole business of enabling the people at the sharp end of the operation in AirAsia and other customers to really make improved decisions, whether it's at the strategic, tactical, or operational level of the business, to optimize their asset performance, reduce cost, and continually driving the business harder and harder to make better and more effective decisions. It's been a heck of a journey and it's not over yet, but it managed it exciting. So Andrew, great, you. thanks. That's great up. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate it. That's a great uh, that's a great story to Air Asia has been an amazing partner for us over the last couple of years and it's just been a thrill to work with them and understand how we can really change this industry, you know, on the front end of the business. You know, and I want to remind folks, by the way, if you have a question, you can comment uh, within the Hangout event on General Electric's Google Plus page or you can tweet at General Electric using the hashtag Industrial Hangout. Uh, with that, let me take one more uh, minute to pass this over to 
our final panelist, Brant Simmons. Brant, why don't you give us the engineering perspective? What's GE doing with big data and analytics, and how is that really changing the way we're working when you think about what we're doing internally and in, in, in using analytics to help our business? Yeah, sure, Drew. Thanks. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting. I mean, our engines work in a very demanding internal environment, right? So I've worked for 25 years on the turbo machinery insides of the engine. It's a very hot, very fast spinning, demanding environment. We design the parts to last a long time, but they don't last forever, right? So the question is then, how do you schedule those things off so that the maintenance and the refurbishment and the, the treatment of that engine is appropriate, right? So you don't have unscheduled things that disrupt the, the customer's operation, those kinds of things. So we've been doing the fundamentals of that for years, right? We've been working on investigations and the like, but what's really exciting is we're getting information now on the operation of the engines that we never had before. So just, a, a, you know, you mentioned, Jude, the, the whole idea of going from analog to digital. You know, long time ago, right, so when I first started, I worked on capturing some of the data from our customers about the way they flew the engines because we designed kind of for takeoff in that tough environment. Well, when we were getting that data, we were actually using physical snapshots, pictures, right? We paid somebody to sit in the seat take a picture of the engine cluster and try to interpret where the dials were to figure out what the duty cycle was of the engines. Right? We had an idea what it was, but we didn't know the actuals. So what's really exciting today is we're getting lots of data from all the operations that we can figure out not only kind of the base behavior, but all the variation. So for the engineers that you know might be listening here, which is terribly excited about that is understanding your boundary conditions so that I can then marry the statistical understanding of the variation of what's going on, right? It's the data science and the variation and all this operational information. I can marry that to the deep domain expertise for the folks that have been building, designing, and analyzing part these parts for years. So that union of those two things, given understanding, helps us really nail down why is it occurring, why is it occurring in some places and not others, to understand that variation instead of just kind of being blind to that in the noise. So the integration of all the data, the big data, and marrying that the domain expertise has given us just insights that we've never had before. Allows us to develop better solutions that help both the customer, you know, and getting the solution out there so that we have fewer disruptions. So it's a very exciting time. You've, you know, you're an engineer with new tools in the toolkit, and you can solve problems uh, in a better and more effective way. And it's just, it's just a great thing to have. So back to you, Jude. Cut this out. Great, thanks, Brent. That was a lot of good insight into some of the things we're starting to do. Is it's a really good transition because what we want to do now is uh, really turn this over to the Q and A portion of the uh, of the hangout. And so we had some pre-submitted questions. I think that we've been seeing come in. I want to go ahead and maybe start by uh, introducing a couple questions. And as I do, we'll go through and toss around to the team to answer the ones that uh, that we think are probably the the most. Um, uh, in their area of expertise to answer. So, and I'm going to start with the first one. So let me take the first one. The first question uh, come over is, is GE Aviation using the Predix platform? How open is Predix? In other words, can operators use Predix with third-party predictive maintenance solutions or only with GE software? Um, the answer is uh, actually yes. GE does use the Predix platform. This is our platform for the industrial internet, and we have been using it inside of our own uh, aviation business for the last 18 months. And so we are, we are using it primarily today as our big data and analytics platform to allow us to work with um, customers and allow us to work with different, uh, different companies within our industry on predictive analytics. And there's some very specific examples that uh, we may be able to get to and hang out with some questions I've seen come up. But, but the answer is yes, we do use it. Predix is a completely open architecture. Um, it is built on top of Cloud Foundry. And, um, it is one that we will be making available to the industry, I believe, later this year um, as we get to our Predix 2.0 release. And that will be something that third-party solutions will work. So GE's Predix platform is intended to be completely agnostic and not have to be specific to the GE product base, but is capable of, of ingesting and providing analytics and decision support in different products and tools based on uh, any asset within the industry. Um, so with that, let me uh, go ahead and go to uh, a second question. Uh, the second question is, how has Power by the Hour changed the PLM and SLM ownership responsibility mix between OEMs and operators, and how will this change into the future? 
so let me let me turn that one over maybe to John Goff. John, if you want to answer this question. So the question really is, when you look at aviation, G aviation owning the PLM space, and then our operators really operating the SLM or the services lifecycle management, how do you see that mix changing or that mix working together in the future, especially when you think about a world where uh, potentially people are on a similar platform or the, the Predix platform and all working together? Yeah, so you know, if 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 you if you want to know what the definition of Predix is, and, and the guys out at the software studio, we, they, they put it to me this way. It, and, and all we've done is we've basically copied what the definition of Google is. And, and that is, you know, the definition of Google by the CEO there, so he says it's a platform that makes the world's information readily available and useful for all. Well, what we're doing with Predix is we're allowing uh, your industry, in our case, the airlines, and at an individual airline to have their information readily available and useful for all. So that for the first time ever, you can connect the machines that are at the asset level, at the fleet level, and at the enterprise level together, and then have the people that are managing these, whether it's an aircraft at the asset level, whether it's a uh, you know a, a person in finance working on a on an ERP, or or you know at the fleet level, it's the managers, and at the enterprise level, it's a C-suite. But now with with Predix and being able to connect all that information together. And being able to analyze it in in a lot greater scale. Right now, you know, uh, uh, Wikibox says only 0.05% of all data in industries is actually analyzed. Uh, so, you know, what would it be like if it got to 1% or 5% or even 100%? And that's what that's what uh, you know Predix is going to allow at the at the airline level to do this themselves. Uh, and then, you know, if we can help, we can. But you know, when you do when you ask Jude, is it going to Kind of flip everything on its head. It is, you know, we're gonna the the airline's gonna be a lot smarter with their data. They're gonna understand it a lot better. They're gonna glean business intelligence out of it, and and you know maybe nece- you know not need us as much, uh, you know, going forward as far as helping them with all that, and they can do it themselves. So it's a little bit like you know teaching them to fish a little bit rather than feeding them fish uh, individually. So that's how I see this going forward. And, and, the, and the power of Predix and the power of these analytic hubs that we're, we're building. Great. Thanks, John. That's a great answer and uh, a good insight to how you see the future of this playing out. There was a question online I wanted to just address before I pass the next question over, which is, the question was, is this being recorded? The answer is yes, this is being recorded and will be available immediately following on YouTube uh, after this is over. Uh, so the next question, Brant, I'm going to toss to you. Let me let me throw this out. Um, it's in the area of predictive maintenance and predictive monitoring. And you look at historically in the industry, we've been very uh, diagnostic and very, very much, I'd say, you know, being able to not be predictive, but being able to answer questions of something that's happened after the fact, right? What in the space of predictive analytics, predictive monitoring, is GA Aviation doing to try to really bridge that gap or get over that chasm of moving from really prescriptive to predictive analytics? Sure, great, yeah, great question. Um, You're right, we have done lots of things over the years uh, for a long time that's kind of a diagnostic, and if, if, to to clarify what I mean by that is, it's almost like, is the patient sick today, right? Can I look at the parameters, can I look at the way the engine's behavior and say, is there an issue today that needs to be addressed? What we really wanna get to is predicting in the future Will you know? Will the patient, the engine, develop something that we don't want? When will that happen, and how do we get predict- predictive? So it's, what's really been helpful for that is again, I, I mentioned the marrying of the physics and the statistics, right? If we know from the design and the analysis and the certification of the engine, the failure mode, and and what I mean by that is hot section gas path parts in the turbine, right? They have corrosion or oxidation, things temperature related, how fast they're spinning. We know the failure mode, the failure mechanics. We can link that to the parameters, right, that drive those in, into the engine. And there's some variables, right? There's some other things that create noise. But the great thing about this bigger data is we can we can link the environmental data, the operational data, the configuration data, and understand what are those things influencing the life, if you will, or the expected durability of the part. Once you've got those things, you kind of get the transfer function you know, from a mathematical standpoint of what are the big X's that drive the output. The output is a predicted life. The X's are all the the temperatures and the speeds and those things. Once you've got that transfer function, you can start to feed the information about how the engines are flying. And you can feed that transfer function, reverse it, and predict 
the outcome. So we've done this in several cases now, and we're getting you know pretty good at predicting you know what the variation is. And it's not to collapse all the variation; it's to understand the variation because there is stuff that happens. People operate differently in different parts of the world. So being able to feed the the fundamental physics of the failure mode and the and that, and then feed the information to it, and kind of watch them over time as they age and accumulate damage has, has been a way that we can start to get predictive with these. We've got several of those that are working and it's, it's really exciting from an engineering standpoint to go from, you know, what problems do I have today to thinking ahead and to get ahead of the problem uh, and solve it that way. Great. Thanks, Brian. That's a, that's a very insightful and appreciate the answer. I have two questions I want to uh, address. Uh, one, I'm going to take myself on big data and then Andrew, a follow-on that I'm going to forward to you. So the first question is, you know, how does GE think about big data and how we're using big data in the space of, of, of predictive analytics and predicts? Um, the answer is that, you know, GE's platform, uh, Predicts Built on Cloud Foundry, is really the platform that we believe the industrial internet will thrive on in the future. And the reason that that's going to work is because of the key collaboration points that both um, OEMs, customers, operators, leasing companies are going to be able to really collaborate and build products to to better, you know, improve the operational efficiencies of of their airlines. And you know, the, all of that data, all of that information, is extremely valuable to to the the people that are using the platform. And you know, GE's uh, uh, GE's platform is backed by our data lake technology. And uh, again, Pivotal is the company that GE is partnered with to deliver that back end. Uh, data lake technology. Uh, a lot of what we believe is that, you know, in the future when you look at big data, traditional data stored technologies really just are things that have, over time, um, really provided uh, an inability to move very quickly, the ability to ingest different data sets, different data types, and the ability to really create these new analytics that really branch this reference. And what we've been able to do over the last two years is actually construct um, our, our data lake to be able to take advantage of multiple data sets, whether that's data that we get from our monitoring and diagnostics, some of the products that Brand mentioned, our own maintenance records that we use for engines that we service, uh, weather data, environmental data. Uh, all of that information can now be uh, brought into one environment, including video and, and even audio in some cases, to really give you a full picture of the life cycle of an asset. And so being able to orchestrate and fuse that data in ways that you never could before allows you to put new analytics tools on top that really give us the ability to do uh, predictive analytics in a way that we really didn't even think possible, you know, in as recently as three or four years ago. And so it's this new technology base, it's this new set of tools that are, are really delivering capabilities to our engineering experts such as Brandt and also data scientist experts that sit in our GE software facility in San Ramon. Um, to really enable a lot of the capabilities that we're talking about. And, the, and so the follow-on to that, Andrew, is when you think about big data and remote condition monitoring, dynamic diagnostics, predictive analytics, to conduct real-time prescription and prognostics for our end customers, how is GE thinking about that? How are we going to deliver those real-time capabilities to airlines in the future? Well, uh, thanks, Jude. And it is, it goes a little bit back to, uh, to, to what I was saying before. It, it's about bringing the data and the ability to interpret that data in a logical, very quick and insightful way to enable the people at the sharp end of the business to make better and better decisions and more towards real-time decisions. I mean, traditionally, when you look at how we've managed um, you know, our fuel uh, services in the past, we've been relying on airlines bringing us data in a, it, if they're doing well, we get a data feed every week. So, you know, you're looking at you know, data that could be at least a week old, in often, often cases it's, it's a month old. Uh, so the new technology and certainly all of the capabilities that uh, are inherent within the, the, the Predix platform will enable us to really bring uh, an, uh, the recency of the data that we're basing decisions on right up to, you know, I mean, streaming in real time would be absolutely phenomenal to absolutely bring the power of Predix and the power of uh, our analytics right to real time. So you're not looking historically at wondering, well, what, what, based on history, what can I do now? You're looking at real time data and, and helping drive real decisions. And I, and I think that as we go forward, the thing that really excites me is the ability, as you mentioned there, to bring in other sources so that you're not just looking at flight plan data or even just flight data in terms of trajectory, you can interpret what actually happened using weather 
and other information, but particularly weather. I mean, that's one of the biggest unknown factors that affects an airline operation on a flight-by-flight -flight basis. To integrate that and interpret it, and then to really decode uh, a flight or even a segment of a flight to understand what's going on, never mind what happened, but what's going on. How can I influence the rest of that flight to make the best possible decisions, not just to uh, get to the end point, but to get there in the most efficient manner possible? I think it's, it's so exciting, really, really, I think we're on the edge of a revolution here. And, uh, and certainly when I, when I look at you know, my portfolio of you know, both the flight risk side and certainly the fuel management side, what I can see is that you know, we're going to be able to go places very shortly that we couldn't even dream of you know, three, five years ago. It's awesome. So Great, Jude, thanks, if you don't, go you ahead, mind John. if I add just a little bit to that? Yeah, go ahead, please. You know, historically, airlines don't look at each flight as a business case. And, and what pushes back from the gate, flies, lands at the gate, people get off. And it didn't until sometime at a, at a later date that they look at the, at the aggregate of flights and they determine, you know, where could we have potentially saved money as an aggregation of flights rather than treating each flight as a business case. And with our analytics and the block cost model, and where we're going with Predix is the airlines for the first time ever, and, and they understand this, is they'll be able to treat each flight as a business case and understand what are the variables and the cost drivers during each phase of that flight from the time it's at the gate to the time it gets back to the gate. And that's the exciting part, and that's where the airlines see the future of all this analytics and big data going. And we just happen to be uh, at the forefront of all that. Great, thanks, John. That's a, another additional bit of good insight. I, I have a, another question. I want to go ahead and, and and open up. This is when will Predix be certified for flight? Uh, I'm thinking Predix machine in this case. So Predix will be launching commercially in fourth quarter of this year. Uh, we are in alpha now. We will be in beta in probably midsummer, uh, with the intent of a fourth quarter launch in 2015. Um, so be looking for that. You're going to definitely uh, have a chance to. Um, See more about that coming up in the fall. GE's uh, annual industrial internet conference is meant to be the place where we'll go ahead and, and officially launch Predix, and that's where uh, it'll take its first light. Um, there's another question about describing applications of big data where you have improved fuel efficiencies and asset availability, and how much of the 22 billions uh, that we were describing are we able to reduce? I, I want to make sure I clarify that. That's why I want to make sure we answer that question. So that $22 billion per year of inefficiency is an industry number. That number has three components to it. It's around fuel inefficiencies, delays and cancellations, and asset availability. G is currently partnering uh, with several customers, in particular around fuel uh, inefficiencies, navigation, delays, and cancellations. Um, but that number is an industry number. Our intent with the Predix platform and what we're offering to the industry is a chance for uh, our customers to unlock a lot of this inefficiency and to help them find ways to reduce that within their own operations with, through the Predix ITOT offering. So uh, just to be clear, that number is an industry number that we're helping unlock for our customers. It's not for GE to go and intentionally consume all of that uh, opportunity ourselves. Um, and with that, a, a ton of good questions. Thanks, everybody, for your participation. Um, again, this will be available on YouTube immediately following if you'd like to go ahead and check it out or pass it on to your friends. Thanks, everybody, and have a great day.